Racing pigeons, domesticated descendants of the wild rock dove. People and pigeons have been together for a long time. 2,000 years ago, the Romans had them to carry messages, to predict omens, and to look into the future. Even Genghis Khan had a squad of pigeons. And since then, they've been on dozens of battlefields. They've flown from sinking ships and crashed aircraft. Pigeon racing as a sport used to have a cloth cap and muffler image, but that's changed. Even the royal family are involved, and the Queen Mother has long been a patron of the sport. And we're here to learn about these marvellous birds. Jack Shelton, with his wife Vera, keeps a village shop at Robin Hood near Wakefield and he's a highly respected breeder and racer of pigeons with a lifetime of experience. He's won many of the big prizes that this sport has to offer. And as he says, to be a pigeon man, you need a tolerant wife. And I'm sure Mrs. Shelton would agree. Jack's lofts out in the yard behind the shop and here he goes to get his birds ready for today's race. There's more to this than just bunging them into a basket. These birds are highly trained feathered athletes after all and the products of a lifetime's work. Looks as though you're really getting down to it. Oh, yes, I, this is where all your money goes, Michael. <laughs> You've got a real lot full. I mean, how long have you been keeping pigeons? I've kept them ever since, uh, well, my father and my uncle had them. They used to fly at Shelton Brothers way back 1919. And I've never been out since I was born. I've always had pigeons, always been associated with them. I could set pigeon clocks when I was 12 years old. God, you've served a long time with <laughs> them, then, haven't you? I have, yes, yes. Looking yes. at your birds, I mean, I don't know a lot about them. There's barred ones, and what are these? Are these checkers or mealies? Yeah. Or... That's, that's a checker one. That's a ah. checker white flight. This is a blue bar that had an accident. Aye. He broke his wing on a pylon, and Aye. I had him reported at Renthorpe. Yeah. And I went and fetched him back. He's a very well-bred pigeon. He's a pure Delbar, and uh, but he can fly a little. Yeah. So, so he's but, recovering, is he? Oh yes, but it but yeah. it never he'll never be fit to race yeah. again. I mean that's the colour of the wild one, isn't it? That's Even right. to the white rump. Now yes, that's quite yes, remarkable. A, yeah. That's a blue bard one. Yeah, a a bird. I mean these you've bred these for years, so you know all the pedigrees and all the backgrounds. Oh, I know the grandfathers, the great grandfathers, the great grandmothers. And I've had them a, a long time, some of them. There's another one here. This is one of my main stock birds. Oh yeah. This is a pure Delbar, but he's an old man now, as you can yeah. see. Yeah, it's they a always uh, increase yeah. the wattles, yeah. the sear, etc. Yeah. Uh, older they get, of course. Yeah. And uh, I got uh, the father and the mother direct from Ireland yeah. for these, for him. I mean, in that time, you've obviously had some champs. I mean, you know, they're oh, well yes. known. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, I've had some, uh, I've had some very good pigeons, actually. Yeah. I mean, when you're looking after them on a day-to-day -day basis, I mean, you're booking out now. What is it? I mean, the feeding that's got to be sort of regulated? And oh, well, it, you've got to be absolutely... You, being regular is one of the most important things about pigeon racing. If you're going to feed your birds at 7 o'clock on the morning, or let them out at 7 o'clock on the morning, it wants to be 7 o'clock every morning. If you're going to feed them at 6 o'clock, on a night, it wants to be six o'clock. I don't mean five past five till it wants to be dead off. I like my pigeons to be part of me and me part of them. There's a, something builds up between you and uh, that's why I like my pigeons and like to be with them. Pigeon racing is a lot more scientific today, but even today, the health of the pigeon and the fitness of the pigeon is most important. 
I've no doubt that you can give them aids to help them to uh, recover and that sort of thing. But pigeons are like flowers. They've come to a, a bloom and they fade. And pigeons are just the same. They'll come to a peak and then they'll go back. And you've got to get them to that peak to get the best out of them. Every bird's ringed and registered and the paperwork starts here at the loft. He's selected a mixture of old and young birds for this race, which is rather late in the season. Useful experience for the youngsters. The most important thing is for the pigeons to be the proper weight, without any fat on. Muscle, they want to have some muscle, but not fat. And they also want to be in perfect health. The skin wants to be pink, and warmer the feet are, and cleaner the feet are, and better condition they're in. Now it's off to the club to join all the other hopefuls who are gathering there to get their birds ready for transport to the release point. There are scores of pigeon clubs, if not hundreds, all over this region. And the headquarters of Jack's is the Loft House Social and Athletic Club. The centre of activity is this shed out at the back. All the club's entries pass through here and there's a lot of pigeon talk while everybody waits their turn. That's a cop. It's an old cop. X64896. 64896, check it out. That's a trainer. I'll read it out, just same. This rather sinister looking machine shoots a rubber racing ring onto the bird's ankle. Absolutely painless. Looks like something out of a dentist, though. The male birds are kept separate from the females, and this lot are all ready to go gently cooing. And this lot outside are filling me in on details of the day's race. <laughs> it sounds as though pigeons are like air liners. They pick shortest route. Because it was surprising how close they are in air travel to that, you know? Could be one of these freaky routes where they're not picking up whatever it is that guides them then. But there won't be just these birds to go up here. No, I mean, there's a lot more besides yeah, yeah. yeah. racing, though. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like Fred, it's just like on a Saturday, you don't get them all back here. No, you don't. Yeah. No. How far is it from Leicester then? 76 miles. Top side here, it's only far from the other side. The conveyor is specially built to take pigeon baskets and several thousand birds. In the old days, it was travel by train, six old pence per basket. But British Rail have stopped that now, so it's taxi all the way. Quite a job loading up. Running a conveyor is a large expense for the Federation of Clubs, but it's worth it. The convoyer, Fred Webster, takes this one all over the place, including into Europe for long-distance races. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jack, as club president, is organising the important job of clock setting.
Well, there they go, taking the southward road. Every weekend of the season, the Yorkshire amalgamation alone puts 60 to 70,000 birds in the air. And nationwide, there are something like 350,000 flying from the various amalgamations and combines. The amazing thing is, though, that the vast majority are going to come home as quickly as they can. How they do it, nobody knows, but there's plenty of theories. Do they navigate by the sun? Do they use the Earth's magnetic field? What about radio waves? And even a recent theory that they smell their way home. Imagine flying along until you hit a familiar scent and then getting a bearing and tracking on home. We don't know how they do it. Perhaps we'll never know how they do it. But the whole business of pigeons and racing is bound up with the big subject of bird navigation and, of course, of bird migration. In the autumn migration in the Northern Hemisphere, 5,000 million birds are on the move. That's a heck of a lot of birds. And, of course, the survivors will be back, just as those pigeons will be back as sharp as possible after release. Precision and attention to detail are what pigeon racing is all about. The timers have to be set, checked and synchronised absolutely. Speeds that pigeons reach, called velocities in the trade, are calculated in yards per minute. The distance from race release point to home loft is accurately plotted. Each loft gets a computed allowance for distance from the neighbouring lofts and so on and a lot of calculation decides race winners often by yards or seconds when the birds return. Clocks set and the timers then are sealed. This means that nothing can happen until the ring on the returning bird is pushed into the clock on its thimble. We're going at 8.10 and we're 15 to go. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one. Up! The clock setting is a very delicate and precise business. I'd hate to think of all those miles being flown just to have something wrong with the clock at the end. Notice that the clocks are handed round after being set. You don't seal your own, in other words. And there they go. While Jack's birds travelled south for release, these travelled north to Pontefract for returning to South Wales and the Midlands. A couple of circuits of the release area to get a bearing and then they make for home. One of the miracles of bird life, this, the ability to get back from 50, 100, or even 500 miles away. How long have you been watching them go? Oh, donkey years I've been coming here. Do you fly birds a year old? Yes, I've from down Wallingford. Have you? Oh, where, yeah. how far's that away? 143. Aye. Down Oxford, that. When do they do back? Uh, back to Oakland. Yeah, yeah. When do you think these will get home? Well, I should say about four hours. Mm. Mm. You know. If everybody seemed to be looking at Sky and the Watchers. Oh, well, all pigeon men, they are, when the, the birds are on their wing, they're looking at Sky all the time, you know. Yeah. But then they seem to be coming to loft. Yeah, what about today? Is it good weather or bad weather? It's or... perfect here, perfect flying weather Is it? here. Mm. Clear visibility, and that's the main problem with pigeon flying. 
is the visibility. Yeah, visibility. A good start with pigeon flying, there was some good racing. Some birds do get lost or stray away, and convoyers bring any strays found in their area as close to home as possible before releasing them again. These are Yorkshire birds mainly who'd gone adrift in the Midlands and Wales. Somebody's in for a surprise when they turn up. Uh, it's a, it's a Yorkshire bird. Well, it's good of you to give them a lift, isn't it? Does everybody do this in <laughs> different oh, federations? Oh, 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 it says on this, I am lost. I can see that. I am lost at ring numbers on. Don't yeah. tell you where it's from, though, no, that. No. Sea ring. Go on. Have had it goes back in transporter. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jack waits nervously. My, birds, my youngsters have only had two or three races, and uh, I don't know whether I've done right to them or not sending them in midweek. Put six old ones in and six youngsters, and I think it'll be the youngsters that'll come first because the old ones haven't had any training. Oh, when I'm sitting here waiting, I smoke a lot of cigarettes, and I uh, sometimes I lose patience, I keep looking around. But normally, when you've been experienced as long as I have, you nearly know what time your pigeons should be here to be in the winning bracket. I think it's love of home, actually, that brings them back. I know there's all sorts of uh, scientific uh, ideas of what brings them home, but I think, myself, that the sun has a lot to do with it. Oh, as soon as I see a bird coming, I, get, I still get butterflies in my stomach. Not so much as I used to do, but uh, I do, especially in long races. In short races, you probably get two or three together and your butterflies have gone before your birds landed. After all these years, it's not as imperative that I win as what it used to be. But I still like to win and I still like to win my share. And I still do win my share. But uh, it's a sensation still when you get a pigeon. False alarm, it's not one of Jack's. Come on. Come on. Come on. And here are the first ones. Come on, boy. Come on, man. Come on. A bit of food tempts them in, but you don't want them stuffing themselves at this time. Jack shoes them in and they go without too much messing about. Imagine how you'd feel if they sat on the roof for half an hour rather than getting into the loft. The timing was just about right on Jack's forecast. Off with the ring, then it's into the clock, and the time mark registers immediately. A quick spruce up, and Jack's ready to go to the club. All over the district, the same thing must be happening now. Right, will you all get a clock, please? That doesn't belong here. The clocks are gathered up and the checkers start the countdown. Nobody strike their own clock. No. Fifteen. Ten. Five, four, three, two, one, up! Before the winners can be declared, there are some pretty intensive calculations to be done. The clocks contain discs like those in a tachygraph. Distance, time, loft variations, clock variations, if any, these are all factors in this final analysis. The checker has a calculator, but he seems like a mathematical genius to me. Oh. 
Meanwhile, everybody waits. Eight, seven, and it reads eight, seven, and two, seven. The scrutiny is close, to say the least. Jack says it helps if you smoke, drink and swear a lot. For this is a sport where the pressures are intense and any relief helps. He's at 5, 50 and 23 seconds. Yes. But now the moment of truth. First is Dean Crowther, 11.13.2. Second is Ailazel, 11.12.2. Third is Dean Crowther, 11.07.4. And fourth is Jay Batty and Son, 11.07.3. Look at the winner, David Crowther. Not a flicker shows on his face, but I bet he's as pleased as punch. No luck for Jack tonight. His birds came nowhere. And now the final reward, a well-earned pint. Anyway, that's it. You've won. Yeah. What sort of race was it then? It was a bit of a good race, I thought. Um, a bit easier than I thought, actually, with weather. This is a sort of funny race, in a way, isn't it? A mixture of young and old birds. What's now between now and end of the season? All young birds. All young birds. Right up to the South Coast, fair them. Yeah. No, that's true, but you see, we put old and young birds in to try and make a success of it, and uh, which we did. There was uh, knocking on for 200 birds went which otherwise there would have only been perhaps 120. Mm. Uh, so consequently, it made better prize money. And it, invariably, it makes a better race when you send both old and young birds. We had to be up here for half past six, and I still had quite a yeah. few missing when I came. Hopefully, they've all come home now. Oh, they'll be waiting for you we'll when waiting, you get back. They'll be waiting they? for some food. Yeah. 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 When, when you're driving them down, Fred, I mean, I've just thought of it. You haven't got a sign on that roof that says, wait for this van, have you? <laughs> uh, sometimes I, I, I should imagine so, because for some simple reason, they generally hug the motorway, and it makes me wonder if I, you know, come up the M1, I think to myself, have they got that line of flight? Hang about until you get to the right junction, then get a move on. <laughs> no, not all the time. I'm hoping that they're a long way in front of me. <laughs> anyway, it's been a great experience. Here's to pigeons. Thank Thank you. Cheers. 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 Thank you.